Okay. All right, welcome back everyone for our second lecture. So today, all three lectures on same topic. Following Jesus. That's the topic. Following Jesus. Same topic. Uh, we're just building on it a little bit. Uh, online, uh, students, any questions? Any questions from here? Plus, any questions so far? Okay. So, in this, in the first hour, we said our calling is to be like Jesus. That's our call. So, we must all be very clear. I want to be like Jesus uh, in everything. So, you know, is it helping me become more like Jesus? When I look at people, ministers of God, I can learn from their examples, good example. If it's helping me become more like Jesus. Otherwise, other things I just leave off. Don't worry, just leave it. Uh, don't say anything about it. Be, you know, let the Lord hold them accountable. But our goal is just to follow Jesus. When get they sin? Do you have a question or something? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. All right. So, in this session, uh, second session, I want to talk about following Jesus in lifestyle. Following Jesus in lifestyle. That means. How did Jesus live his life? What are some things? Of course, you know, we could spend many hours talking about the life of Jesus. But I want to just mention a few, few, few points or a few things. And we must make, we must follow that example. Follow Jesus in lifestyle. How he lived. We will also do so. What are the things he did? We will also do the same things. Follow Jesus in lifestyle. Because Jesus said, the disciple is not greater than the master. Not greater. If the master had to do it, then we also have to do it. If Jesus had to pray, you and I have to pray. You know, so we have to follow his lifestyle. No shortcut. So let's begin with a few verses and then we will go into some key aspects of the lifestyle of Jesus, which we must imitate. Let's start uh, with two verses from 1 John, the first epistle of John. So it's towards the end of the New Testament. Let's go there, 1 John. We'll read two passages. 1 John chapter 2. And we'll read verse 6 first. First John chapter 2. We'll read verse 6. First John 2 and verse 6. This is what it says. First John chapter 2, verse 6. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. So it says, if anybody says, you are in Jesus, so you are a Christian, you are in Jesus. If anyone says, they are in Jesus, then John says, you have to walk as Jesus walked. Or you can put it like this, you have to live like Jesus lived. So I can't say, I am in Jesus, and then live some other way. I can't do that. If anyone says that he is in Jesus, he has to live as Jesus lived. Or you have to walk as Christ walked. Walk like him. So that's the challenge. I have to live like Jesus. I can't say I am in Jesus and live like the devil. No connection. <laughs> Some mismatch is there. <laughs> you're saying you're in Jesus, living like the devil. Something is wrong. 
If you're in Jesus, you have to live like Jesus. You know, uh, First John chapter 4 and verse 17. So if you turn to chapter 4, First John chapter 4 and verse 17. It says, love has been perfected among us in this. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. So if you want to restate what, it, what, what John is writing, you know, God's love is made perfect in us. That means we know we are loved perfectly by God and we love him perfectly. There's this, this love relationship. His love has been perfected in us. And we have boldness in the day of judgment. That means when judgment day comes, we are not afraid. Because we are in a love relationship with God. We know God loves us. I love him. So even if I have to stand before God in judgment, no, no fear. And then he says something else. Why there is no fear? Because as he is, so are we in this world or you know there's another way to state it other english bibles will put it like this our life in this world is the same as his that means we are living like jesus in this world so you see the connection between being loved by god and loving god and living like jesus so I can't say, I love God and God loves me, therefore I can go and do whatever I want. No. I love God. God loves me. So my life on earth is just like Jesus. I live like Jesus. As he is, so are we in this world. And that gives us boldness in the day of judgment. Not afraid. Because one hand, we are loved by God. We love God. The other hand, we are living like Jesus. So when we stand on Judgment Day, boldness, not a fret. I understand. So the challenge here is our life on earth must be the same as His. We must walk as He walked. We must live like Jesus. So, we want to know how to do that. How do we live like Jesus? That's the call of God on our lives, to become like Him. And that's what Jesus said. It's enough for you to be like me. Uh, and if you are perfectly trained, you'll be like me. We saw three ways how He's training us. Now, how do we walk like Jesus? How do we live like Jesus? Right. So, when we read the Gospels, we can examine the life of Jesus. What were some things he did? Let us also try to follow that. Follow that. Right? What were some things he did? So I want to just highlight. So these are just highlights, some main points. Right? What do we see? First of all, we see intimacy, number one, intimacy with the Father. Intimacy with the Father, meaning a close relationship with the Father. Close relationship with God. We see that in the life of Jesus. And here again, there are many scriptures that we could look at. I, I will just point us to one or two things. But You know, Jesus, from the beginning of his life, Till the very end. His one thing was, I have to be close to the Father. Have a, that relationship with the Father. Close relationship. Intimacy with the Father. John, in John chapter 1, so if you go with me please. He says that Jesus was in the bosom of the Father. John chapter 1. No man has seen God at any time. 
right? John chapter 1. I think it's this. Which verse is this? Yeah, verse 18. John 1, 18. John chapter 1, verse 18. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. John 1, verse 18. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Now, I'm just thinking about that, that phrase that John is saying, that the Son, that is the Lord Jesus, is in the bosom of the Father. It's like He's sitting in the Father's lap. You know, that's the picture. He's in the bosom of the Father. That is the kind, it's, it's a picture of that relationship. He's in the bosom of the Father. And this is the Son, this is the Lord who has revealed the Father. So think about this. Before Jesus came to the earth, he was in the bosom of the Father. Now he comes to the earth. He's walking on the earth. But he's maintaining that same relationship with the Father. That same closeness. How does he do it? And, and, and that's that's the thing. So we want to live as people who are in the bosom of the Father. That means we are so close to the Father. That kind of close relationship. So when Jesus is walking on the earth, he's in a sinful world. Yeah, he's, you know, in the middle of all kinds of things. But his relationship with God, with the Father is, as though he is living in the bosom of the Father. That's the relationship. While he is here on earth, in the middle of all the evil things, he's still maintaining that close relationship. So Jesus said things like this. I'll just mention a few verses. In John 5, verse 19, he says, the Son can do nothing of Himself, but what He sees the Father do. John 5, 19. It says, the Son, John 5, 19. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, the Son can do nothing of Himself, but what He sees the Father do. For whatever He, that is the Father, does, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father, verse 20, For the Father loves the Son and shows Him all things that he himself does. So think about that relationship. And Jesus is walking in that relationship here on earth. How is he doing that? He says, you know, I won't do anything of myself. But what I see the Father do, that's what I will do. So you can imagine, you know, Jesus is in that um, relationship. I said, Father, is this okay? Father says, no, don't do that. Okay, I won't do Father, is this okay? Yeah, go. I'll do. Sometimes Father says, Jesus, I want go do it. Okay. So the Father is telling me, I will go do it. So he's walking in that relationship with the Father. So the Son can do nothing by himself. But what he sees the Father... And only what he tells me, that I will do. So he is walking in that kind of a relationship. We go to John chapter 8. I'll just give us a few more, few more scriptures here. John chapter 8. And 
um, give you the exact words here. Um, yeah. Verse 29. John, or wait, verse 20, verses 28 and 29. John chapter 8, verses 28 and 29. Then Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me, I speak these things. And He who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please Him. Notice that. What is Jesus saying? As my Father taught me, I speak. I always do those things that please Him. So that's how he's maintaining that relationship with the Father. As my Father teaches, I speak. I always do what is pleasing to Him. So like this, you'll find many scriptures. I've just pointed us to a few. But that's the first thing we can say about the lifestyle of Jesus. He walked in that closeness, close relationship with the Father. Are you all with me? You understanding or not? Just, you're with me? Yeah. So we must practice that. Close relationship with God. Lord, what are you saying? God, I don't want to do anything that you don't want me to do. I don't. I want to do the things you are telling me. I want to do things that are pleasing to you. Like Jesus. He said, I always do those things that please Father. So we also, Lord. I want to do the things that please you. Is this pleasing to you? Is this okay? He said, not okay. God, what is the right thing? What do you want me to do? That relationship with the Father. Because Jesus walked like that. So our relationship with God, walking with God, that's important for us. Because we are following in the footsteps of Jesus. Amen? Second thing that we see in the lifestyle of Jesus is prayer. Prayer. Now, if there was anybody on this planet who didn't need to pray, it would have been Jesus. Jesus, you don't need to pray. You've come from God. We all need to pray. You don't need to pray. But when you look at the life of Jesus, time and time again, he goes alone and prays. See, time and time again. So say, example, Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Mark 1. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. This is Jesus, Son of God. God who became man. Oh. He is waking up early. He's going to a quiet place, like away from all the crowd disturbance. And he's praying. Right? Then if you go to Matthew chapter 14. We look at a few verses on this. 
Jesus is very busy with ministry. Matthew chapter 14. And it, Matthew 14. Let me give you the exact verse here. Matthew 14, verse 23. Matthew 14, verse 23. It says, you know, Jesus had just finished feeding 5,000 people. And what does he do after that? And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when the evening came, he was alone there. Now think about this. He had finished feeding 5,000 people. Can you imagine like big meeting, maybe big. <laughs> so many people he had finished, they are all very happy. So Jesus is wonderful. He gave us, he gave us sermon, three month, three day sermon and food also. He gave everything. They must be very happy. And Jesus is not standing there and enjoying the celebration. What are you doing? He's sending, okay, you all go home. And what are you doing? He is going by himself alone to the mountain to pray. He's not even taking, you know, his 12 disciples. So, okay, you all, he is going by himself alone to pray. So if Jesus did it, you and I have no shortcut. No shortcut. The disciple is not greater than the teacher. If Jesus did this, then you and I have to do it. Part of the lifestyle. Lifestyle. Pray. You know, sometimes, if you go with me, please, to Luke chapter 5, sometimes even people look chapter 5. I give you the exact words. Um, again, look chapter five, verse fifteen and sixteen. Look five, fifteen and sixteen. However. The report around con concerning him went around concerning him all the more. And great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Now look at that. Uh, he was becoming very famous. Great crowds of people were coming. They came to hear, they came to be healed. That means it, he could be very busy. So much, so many people are coming. But it's saying there, verse 16, verse, verse 16, he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Crowds were coming, crowds were coming. But he Went and prayed. So sometimes the ministry, ministry can become very busy. Like this. People are coming. People are coming. A lot of things to do. But what did Jesus do? In spite of all that, he went and prayed. You understand? So that is the second thing. We see the ministry of Jesus. And so you and I intentionally must just take time to pray. Yeah. Whether pray in the morning, in the afternoon, the night, whenever you 
Doesn't matter. You pray. You go alone be in prayer. Sometimes, you know, I'm not against prayer groups. It's good to pray in groups, that's, that's fine. But you also need to pray alone. Just you and God. It's good, okay, yeah, there will be some prayer meetings or prayer groups and it's fine. But don't do on prayer only that time. You also do prayer by your son. You alone with God. Just like Jesus. He didn't even take his 12 disciples. He didn't even take his three. He went alone. Pray. So that's the second thing. The third thing. I'll just mention this. In the life of Jesus, his lifestyle, his lifestyle was obedience, obedience, obedience to the Father, of course, obedience. That means our life must be a life under obedience to God or in submission to God. Hebrews chapter 5 is a very interesting passage. So if you turn with me, please, to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. We will read verse seven, verses 7 and 8. Hebrews 5, 7 and 8. Hebrews 5, 7 and 8. It's talking about Jesus. And it says here, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears, to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. It's talking about Jesus. Verse 7 is talking about how he prayed. And specifically, his time of prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. And verse 8 is telling us something very interesting, very important. Though he was a son, this was the son of God. Yet, he learned obedience through the things which he suffered. Now again, this is hard for us to understand. This is the this is Jesus, is God who is coming in the flesh. He's put on humanity. He's walking as a man. And it says he had to learn obedience through what he went through. I mean, it's not easy, even for Jesus. He learned obedience. Some people, sometimes we think, oh, he was God, so obedient. Oh, naturally he just do whatever the Father wanted. But this verse is saying, he had to learn obedience. Through what he suffered. That means you can imagine, when he was tempted by the devil. He was tempted in all areas. He must have suffered in the flesh. Temptation was real. But he said no. And through that, he learned obedience. Learned obedience. Meaning, Father, I will obey you. I will be submitted to you. So his whole life, from beginning to end, was a life of obedience to God. That's why the father said, this is my beloved son 
in whom I am very, I am well pleased. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, very happy. So obedience. Now remember this. Obedience or authority flows through obedience. Authority flows through obedience or authority flows through submission. When we submit to God, then His authority flows through us. That's why the Bible says, Submit to God, resist the devil. So we want to resist the devil, we must first of all submit to God. So our obedience to God is going to determine the level of authority in which we walk in. So God has given us authority. But if I live a disobedient life, I cannot exercise that authority. Because I'm not walking in submission to God. Are you understanding? So first submit to God, then resist the devil. Submit to God, resist the devil, because authority flows through submission. If I'm not in submission to God, then His authority cannot be exercised through my life. So obedience to God, submission to God is very important. And we see that in the life of Jesus. Obedience. Uh, lifestyle. Number four is Humility or servanthood. Humility. Because when you look at Jesus, he is the anointed one. You know, God had anointed him. God had anointed him with the spirit without measure. When you look at Jesus, he is God incarnate. He's a son of God. But how did he live? We see he walked with all humility. He didn't walk, oh, I am the great shepherd. He walked with humility. Look at two passages. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians 2. Verses, and, and the Bible tells us to follow this example. Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11. Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, of those on earth. And of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Jesus. That means take on the same attitude that Jesus had. Let the same mind be in you. So the Bible is saying that you and I must have that same attitude, that same mind. And then it's describing us the, to us the mind of Christ. It says, though he was God. He didn't hold on to that position as God. But it says, he emptied himself, he made himself of no reputation. So what does it mean when you make yourself of no reputation? It means you leave your role, you leave your title aside. So think about this. Though he was God, he emptied himself. And made himself of no reputation. That means when he came to the earth, he didn't come to, hello, I am God. No. He walked as a man. 
He didn't look at Joseph and Mary. Papa, you know I am God. <laughs> no. He was obedient even to his father and mother. So you can imagine. He said, go bring that. He'll go and bring it. Do this. Do it. Who was this? God who became man. He made himself of no reputation. Leave that name, title, leave it all aside. Doesn't matter. And it says, he humbled himself. He humbled himself. Bible is saying, you have the same attitude as Jesus did. Have that same attitude. Though he was God, he gave that up. He made himself of no reputation. He let go of all of that and he humbled himself. Be like that. Be like that. That's his lifestyle. And you can imagine this, you know, in John 13, we read one day, he is sitting with, at meal with his disciples, and suddenly he takes a bucket, uh, a bowl of water, towel, and he starts washing their feet. Like, hey, he's our master, he's our teacher. What is he doing? And only Peter spoke up, Lord. Don't do this. What is this? <laughs> what are you doing? And Peter, Jesus said, Peter, I, I, I need to do this. If I don't do this, you have no part in me. So Peter said, then don't wash my leg, wash my whole body. <laughs> no. Then Jesus said, if I, your Lord and Master, have done this for you, then you should do this for one another. So I want you to be like this. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you have love, this kind of love, one another, where you go and wash each other's feet. That love brings you to this place of humility, of service. So this is how they will know you are my disciples. You are walking in this kind of humility, in this kind of service. So he's called us to walk like that. So I understand. This is the lifestyle of Jesus. Humility, servanthood. And he said, this is how God's kingdom is. This is in Matthew 20. He said, if any of you want to be great, you become the least. If you want to become the leader, you become the servant. This is God's kingdom. You want to be leader? Be a servant. You want to be great? You become the least. Go stand last. This is the kingdom of God. Are you understanding? All right? So this is the lifestyle of Jesus. He gave the example. And if he did it, we must do it. Follow that example. Jesus. Right. So humility is part of his lifestyle. We need to walk like that. And God give us the grace to do that. And, and the last one, number five, is sacrifice. Is sacrifice. You go with me to John chapter, please go with me to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. And we're going to read um, verses 23. Uh, 23, we'll read through to verse 27. John 12, 23 to 27. John chapter 12, 23 to 27. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. 
Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. For this purpose, I came. Now, these verses, Jesus is recognizing he's going to be crucified. It says, for this purpose I came, to be crucified. But he tells us something. He says, a grain of wheat, if you keep it by itself, it's no use. But if that grain goes into the ground and dies, what will happen? There will be much fruit. It will multiply. So Jesus is saying, through this sacrifice, through this death, there is going to be much fruit. So the pathway to fruitfulness is death. The pathway to multiplication is death. When you die, it's not the end. When you die, when you're dying, it's actually a process for multiplication. Understand that. Understand. So if you want to multiply, you have to die. If you want to multiply, you have to die. So let's just think about it practically. So let's say I'm pastor here, pastor of the church. If I want to be the only person who's doing everything, I can that's okay. be the only person here. But if I want to multiply, I mean, if I want to have more leaders raised up and more leaders serving alongside me, I have to die. That means I have to be willing to say, it's not about me. I'll take myself out of the way. Let others come. So the more I die, the more multiplication can happen. Are you understanding? But if you say, oh no, I want, to, I want to be the center of everything. I want to be the center of this universe. I want to have control. I want to have the main person. I want my name to be everywhere. I want to be the person. Well, fine. But you'll be like the grain of wheat. You'll be alone. You can't even make one chapati with one grain of wheat. But if you want to multiply, you have to die. But when you die, multiplication happens. You understand? So that's how we must look at sacrifice. That when you sacrifice for the kingdom of God, yeah, it is painful. It's in some way you're dying to something. But it also means multiplication will happen. For the kingdom of God. However, whatever, it will happen. But if we are unwilling to die, if you're not willing to sacrifice, okay, you'll be that grain of wheat just by yourself. Can't, you know, this, how many stomachs can you fill with one grain of wheat? So, in the kingdom of God, and as, it, as, as, as exemplified by Jesus, Dying, sacrificing, that's the road pathway for multiplication. So what are the five things we saw? First of all, number one, in the lifestyle of Jesus, and there's only a few things, I'm sure we could, uh, we could see a lot more. Number one, 
intimacy with the Father. Yeah, a close relationship with God. That's what you and I must also follow. Second, he went and prayed alone. So you and I, you know, take time to pray during the week. Whenever you find time, pray. Thirdly, obedience, obedience to the Father. He walked in obedience. Lord, what do you want me to do? That is very important. Number four, humility. He walked with humility. Right? He didn't hold on to his role, his position. No, 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 no. Just walked humbly. And fifth, we saw sacrifice. Right? Must be willing to sacrifice. And in the kingdom of God, when you sacrifice, it's never wasted. It will always bear fruit. It will multiply. So when you sacrifice, yeah, sometimes it will be painful, you know, um, the giving up some things. It's okay. There will be fruit. Because when the grain dies, it will bear much fruit. So in the kingdom of God, it's never wasted. Amen? So... Follow the lifestyle of Jesus. Now, this is not everything. These are a few things. I'm sure you can, as you read the Gospels, you'll see a lot more. But follow the lifestyle of Jesus. This is the lifestyle. If you see other people who are exemplary, who are, who are also following this lifestyle, good. You follow that example. Yeah, that's nice. Follow the example. But if you see people who are not following the lifestyle of Jesus, don't follow that example. Leave it. Follow Jesus, his lifestyle. Focus on that. That let that be your standard. Amen. All right. There's some question here. Um, Daniel asks a question. Can we say that it's hard to live a godly life when we are in flesh? Because Jesus himself had to learn so many things in order to live on the earth. Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah, as long as we're in the flesh, there will be challenges, right? We struggle. But God has given His Word and His Spirit to help us overcome. Right? So it's a battle. We have to fight, but we can win. We can overcome. Right? Fine. Let's rise to our feet, please. We will take a moment to pray it and take a break and come back for the last session. In the last session, we'll talk about following Jesus in ministry. How do you follow the example of Jesus in ministry? Okay. So we are talking for session. We talked about our call to be like Jesus. Second session, follow the lifestyle of Jesus. Follow his lifestyle. And third session, when we come back, we're going to talk about following Jesus in ministry Amen. let's take a moment to pray father we thank you for our call to be like jesus to follow his example and lord like jesus he learned obedience through the things he suffered and god help us to learn help us to learn to be trained god we know we're not perfect we know we've got this flesh to struggle with, fight against, and all these things around us. But we ask for the grace upon each of our lives to help us become more like Jesus and to follow Jesus. We're not following a man or a woman. We're not following some denomination or some organization. We are following Jesus and help us to become more like Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's take a break. Ten minutes. We come back at 11, and we will start again. Last session. Thank you.